looking like he is ready. I believe he's heading across the pond tomorrow. But before he heads across the pond, he woke up early. He's getting his mind right with Wake Up Mitzi. What's up, man? How are you this morning? I'm feeling great. That that introduction got me a little fired up. I'm not going to lie, Mitzi. Hell yeah, man. We're trying to just go up on a Tuesday. A bunch of stuff to get into. We got to start with UConn last night. Yep. Look, I've watched college basketball my whole life. Hell, I'm 40 years old. I've probably been following the NCAA tournament for like 34, 35 years now. And what UConn, back-to-back -back championships, they won every game last year and this year by double digits. They've covered every game. Uh, you know, the last time that happened was the Florida Gators in 07 and 08. I didn't know we'd ever, like, see this again with the current transfer portal and the rules and everything changing. Billy Hurley and UConn, there's nothing to say but just total dominance. Uh, I liked their game plan a lot last night. They let Zach Eady kind of eat but they had clinging on them one-on-one, -on -one. Uh, but their length, their guards, Purdue's a great three-point shooting team. They barely made any threes in this game, and, you know, Purdue played really good in the first half. It was a six-point game at the half, but you just, watching the game, you just never felt like UConn was in danger at all, and they were the best team. They're playing a freaking different sport, and now they've won six titles in 25 years. Crazy. I mean, it is insane, and to get into the UConn storyline, of course, we got to get into the Barstool storylines, and that's the fact that our boss, Dave Portnoy, wins $2.1 million, a little over $2.1 million. He bet six hundred k on UConn at, I believe it was like plus 360 before the NCAA tournament, which I thought was crappy odds, but hell, it turned I mean, out if you got even money, it was good. not good. The payout was just fucking great. Well, the funny thing about it, though, when you analyze the gambling, yeah, the odds may have not seemed good, but looking back on it, you could have taken them even money. I mean, they never were threatened. The whole no, tournament. The only tournament. I mean, Bama in the Final Four game came out 8 of 11 for 3 in the first half, and we're still losing by 4. That's yeah. how freaking dominant UConn is. And you look back, at it's just a complete team. Clinging down low is going to be a first-round pick. Uh, their guards are just so good. Uh, you know, Spencer, the Rutgers transfer. Tristan Newton won the won – the, Final four most outstanding player. They're a total complete team. They completely buy in. And now they've ascended the throne as, you know, I don't even think you could say a blue blood of college basketball. I mean, I think you got to put them ahead of everybody. Six freaking titles in 25 years. Yeah, no, that's crazy. And I'm not I'm not a college basketball facade. I'm barely even a college basketball fan. But I just wish I bet them every single game. Like there was no reason to overthink this tournament. They they beat everyone by double digits if you just blindly bet UConn every single game. You would have won every bet, you would have hit your futures, and you would have had a sweat-free March Madness. All like the whole the recipe was there right in front of us the whole time. Bet UConn. No, no. Sometimes the beauty is simplicity, and so much it, it, when we do gambling and do picks on DraftKings, it, it, like I overanalyzing stuff a yeah. lot. And like I'm a contrarian, I take and a lot of underdogs. We're, but we're like the same too. Like we don't like being on the public side either. And like UConn is being bet by, even last night, I don't think I knew one person that had a Purdue ticket. Yeah, it opened at five and a half. It went off at seven or seven and a half, but. They smashed it. Yeah, I mean, you could have alt-lined UConn every game and taken them out as 13. I mean, they just they just beat the hell out of everybody. It's crazy. No, it is crazy. And what's so impressive, it's not like this was like when Florida won it in 07 and 08, they had that core of Al Horford and Noah and Torian Green at point guard, right. Corey Brewer and Humphrey. They had the same team back-to-back -back years. UConn had, like, they lost, like, five of their seven leading scorers or something. You know, Spencer was a transfer. I mean, they almost had a new team in there, and they still go back-to-back -back and win the damn thing, and they own the sport. And uh, there's no getting around it. It was a coronation last night, as Ian Eagle said on the broadcast, but – you know, on the other side of it, though, I mentioned Dave. I also want to mention Big Cat. Shout out Stella Blue Coffee, the only way to wake shout up. Out Big Cat got the best line, plus 1,200. Big Goat. And shout out Jack Mac, too. Big Goat. Yeah, Jack Mac is going to be joining us here about 8.15 to 8.20 to talk about UConn. He had him at like 14 to 1, I believe. But, man, you could have me even money. You never were even threatened. No. Uh, and But I'm happy for Dave and Big Cat and Jack Mac and Ev had him, too. Shout out Jeff D'Lo. Yeah, Jeff D'Lo. Real happy. Took his mom to the Final Four. It just seemed like a big party. Uh, everybody seemed happy uh, but Rico Bosco. But, I mean, Rico couldn't be mad, though. Bama made the Final Four for the first time. I mean, you can't consider that uh, not a success. Looked like the boys had a huge time out at Scottsdale at the Barstool Bar. They were at the DraftKings Sportsbook in, at, T at Scottsdale, I believe, at TBC. Last night, looked like a huge time at the Final Four. Uh, I guess you've never – have you never been to the Final Four? Uh, actually – Funny story. I bought tickets to the final four and the place I bought the tickets from didn't send me the tickets on time. 
What? So I went to Indiana when the Final Four was in Indiana. And I just watched, I think it was Houston Baylor who was playing at the time. Yeah, that was a couple of years ago. It was Houston Baylor, Gonzaga. Like yeah. Gonzaga beat so UCLA. I went there for that. They never sent me my tickets. And then well, I clearly you didn't have the game time app then. That was no, before game time. Was... The game time app is the only way to get last minute tickets. And that would never happen with them. Yes, correct. So I call I called my bank. I said, look, I need the money back. I got scammed. Two weeks go by. They sent me a credit for like twelve hundred dollars. So I'm like, all right. I mean, this they give you cash or ticket credits, ticket credit, which is a, a, a scam in itself. But long story short, that ticket credit got me Ryder Cup tickets because I was like, I don't think it's going to work. But I might as well use these credits, so I used them for the Ryder Cup, and they actually sent me the tickets to the Ryder Cup, and I went to the Ryder Cup. I was the Ryder Cup. Was that it was fun? Amazing. The right, yeah. I've always that's kind of one of those things. Like I've, I've been so. I mean, it's not even fair. And I guess it's because I've lived forty years, but I'm so blessed. Like I've gotten to do like every major sporting event. I almost feel like bad even talking about it, but never done the Ryder Cup. I've been to the Masters twice. Damn. Yeah. How well, the hell do you get on the Masters? Oh man. Uh, so on the ma- and this Masters week, we'll be transferring to that a little bit today. We'll really get to that tomorrow and Thursday with picks. But uh, actually, a quick Masters story. So my great uncle was the golf pro, not at Augusta National where the Masters is, but Augusta Country Club in like the 1940s when the Masters was founded. So our family has four tickets. Uh, it's why, but I mean, we have a big family. I've only been twice. I went in 01. You've only been twice, Mincy. That is such an arrogant statement. You know how many people would give their left not to go once? Yeah, you're right. That is. <laughs> I've only been twice. Well, I was there in 04 when Mickelson won for the first time. That was the super best one I, I went to. And Masters Week this week, uh, obviously, we'll be hitting that. That's going to be super exciting. Uh, the Final Four Masters combo, you know, back-to-back. You know, the best non-football season sports combo, probably. I mean, I, you and I are both big football guys. So. Yeah, I, I love football. That's my favorite. Well, joined by Nikki Smokes here on Wake Up Mincy. We got our dude wipes. We got our Stella Blue. We're ready to face the day. So you're dressed up in your Arsenal scarf. Yep. Uh, I believe you are headed across the pond for, is this the first time ever? Yeah, I've never left the country before. Today we got a Champions League game against Byron. So me and Zaw will be streaming for that game. I believe it kicks off at 2 p.m. Central, so 3 p.m. Eastern. I can't wait. I'm going to London tomorrow. It's the first time I left the country. It's obviously the first time I'm going to go see Arsenal play live in person. So I'm fired up. I can't wait to go. And I can't wait to shag a couple birds across the pond. Oh, going after the little English. You like those accents, huh? I love the accents. Okay. That, that's what gets me fired up about them the most. All right. Lo- love to hear that. Uh, so you're heading out tomorrow. You got a trip. You're going to go to a game. I- I've never been to a Premier League soccer or football, I should say. Uh, the atmosphere is my buddy lived in London for like two years recently. And he literally like quit watching American football, everything. He's like, you don't understand if you're over there, this is the best. best that, sport that's best. what I'm scared of. Cause one of my good friends, shout out Bobby. Uh, he went last year for the first time ever. He said, it's the greatest sports atmosphere you will ever experience in your entire life. And I've been to death Valley at night when they had Joe Burrow and Jamar chase and all those dogs when they played Florida as of right now, that is the number one sports environment I've ever been in. But what he's telling me is that what how they do football over there is just different. So that's what I'm most excited for. Obviously, I love the team. It's great. I'm an, I'm an adrenaline junkie. Adrenaline junkie. I'm kind of like you. Like I like chasing those highs. I like being in the environment. I like feeling people's energy. I like jumping up and down and singing and doing all this other crazy shit. I love getting after it. So yes i'm going to see the arsenal play and hopefully win but what i really want to go there and see is what that fan base is about hell yeah you said zaz going too no it's no, just no. me and my friend kyle just you and your friend well oh good you got a friend to record video you though yeah well so what does a nikki smokes never been out of the country what does uh your it so what what you're gonna go to, you're gonna go to the arsenal game you gonna go hit some pubs, throw some darts. What, what what are you gonna do? Hitting all the pubs, getting a bunch of pints of bitter. That's what they call Guinness out there. And I'm gonna just be boozing, eating, walking, picking up birds. That's my whole itinerary. And speaking of that, so uh, did, you've been here about a year now, huh? Almost. Let's see. I, yeah, I guess it was the heat. So so the story. It you, started in May. Yeah, my it was the Heat Celtics game seven. And yeah. what was the, for those? I mean, most people are familiar, but for those who aren't familiar, uh, how how'd you get hired on that Heat Celtics game seven? Yeah, so the Heat were up three nothing, and then the Celtics won game four. Dave starts chirping me on Twitter. Literally, I was his first tweet after they won the game. Just 
talking shit. I'm like, all right, word. Then they won game five. He starts tweeting me again. Then they won game six. He starts tweeting me again. So after they won game six, he DM'd me the next morning, said, do you want to bet game seven? I said, absolutely. And the rest is history. So, and then, so what was the stipulations on the bet? So obviously I got a one year deal. And then if, had I lost a bet, I would have had to get a tattoo that said Dave was right. But no, no job though. So it was Dave was right. Well, you weren't, you, you had, the heat had to win for you to get hired. The one yeah. Year. I mean, I had suspicion that if I got the tattoo, maybe he was going to hire me. You were already on the right hour, Yeah. But I asked him live on stream, and I don't know if he was just saying it because we were on stream, but I was like, yo, if I had lost that bet, would you have hired me? And he told me no. So maybe it's just God's way of, you know what? They, fuck it. Game seven, I got my nuts on the line. I got my, I'm riding with one of my favorite teams. We won, we won the game by got dominated. Fucking beat the fuck out of them. Yeah, in, in Boston. Yeah. I, I've been in the Garden three times. I've never lost once. Damn. Were you at that game? Yeah. Oh wow! I didn't I know you went the next day. I didn't know you uh, went that game. game. So, so when you got hired, you obviously were one of the first people to move to Chicago before the office. Set. Did you? Did he give you the option to stay in Florida, or do you want to move to Chicago yeah, or New so York? Gave, like what? How to go he, down? He offered me all three. He said, "Do you want to stay in Florida? Do you want to go to New York, or do you want to go to Chicago?" And I just wanted to get the fuck out of Florida. Like I love Florida. Don't get me wrong, but I've been there my whole life. It's the only thing I knew. And then I just heard that all the sports guys were going to chicago and i knew big cat was going there and like that's someone i look up to so it was a no-brainer i wanted to go to chicago and so you moved up here how long have you been here now i moved up here july 14th and i started july 24th okay so yeah i've been here for almost what is that seven months yeah seven eight months and what are your thoughts so far on living in chicago as a floridian i it, how's the adjustment been yeah I, growing up as a floridian i Always thought I'd never leave Florida. I said there was no way life could be better outside of Florida, and I couldn't have been more wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'll always love Florida. Florida will always be home to me, but I am in love with the city of Chicago. It's completely changed my life. The people here are just, they're so much better. They're so much more genuine, down to earth, and just the way they talk and treat people has honestly changed how I talk and treat people. Like that, that Midwest hospitality is a very real thing. I agree. Uh, I've been up here since Halloween weekend now. So I guess that is a little over five months. And it, the people here are so much more approachable in New York. Like I did the two years in New York and it's a whole different deal zoo. than New York. And uh, the cost of living is not as bad here. I mean, it's expensive to live here. I'm not going to sit here and say it isn't, but it's, it's to live anywhere, right but now. it's, it's, it's not New York. And, uh, Man, we've got such a great thing in this office and, you know, the camaraderie. The camaraderie in this office is just, it's unbelievable. It really is. Like, there's there's really no drama, and I know drama sells, but everyone gets along here. Like, everyone's rooting for each other. Everyone pushes each other to be great. The basketball games on Friday are amazing. And then even on the weekends, like, I couldn't tell you the last time I've had a job where, all like, the entire office is going out and hanging out together and, like, just kicking back and drinking and just talking shit. Yep. It's amazing. It is, it is amazing. We're both lucky as hell to be a part of it. So some of your favorite, do you have any particular, like you look back on this year, any of your favorite, obviously the Heat winning game seven, you get hired is probably your favorite moment. Any other favorite favorite Barstool moments? Yeah, I mean. The, the, the Miami, I enjoyed that Miami Patriots. You were talking a lot of shit today, Portnoy, during yeah. that Dolphins-Patriots game this year. I actually, that was a moment where I realized watching you, like I like, you, you give it, you know, Dave, like, you know, it, well, depends on everybody has the thing about this company. Everybody has different relationships with Dave, right? You know, but you were just like giving it back to him, which I thought, you know, I loved it. Uh, and you know, I, I think you like that too, but I know you, that that's a big thing. Yeah. So that was probably my, all right, let's go kid moment, you know, because that was the first time I've really had like a barstool interaction with Dave. I gave him a Kobe Bryant jersey like two years before I got hired, but that stream was great. That's definitely one of my favorite moments just because I walked in there. I didn't know what to expect. So I kind of wanted to let Dave set the tone. I was like, all right, if Dave gets fired up on me and he starts talking shit, I'm going to just fucking blast him when the Dolphins start killing the Patriots. And the Patriots went up 7-0. He started patting me on the back with a little extra love, I, I should say. And then after that, it was just up. So definitely that stream. Um, I enjoyed running the office. I thought that was very fun. That was funny um my first stream with frank the tank the first real stream because the first time we watched it together dolphins won 70 to 20 so i didn't get the real frank experience. yeah the denver game when y'all scored a million but just 
realizing that no one at this company is a bit and they're just fucking batshit crazy that's probably my favorite barstool real realization like when we did the free throw thing and i saw rico bosco like genuinely getting pissed off at the chat like i thought that was a bit but like it it actually fucking bothers him and it was crazy so just realizing that mincy's not playing a character like he just fucks up but he doesn't mean to fuck up but it turns into gold every you know just when you're going upward baby because like you see everyone on video and you're kind of like oh this this might just be a bit but it's like a funny bit and then you get here you're like oh shit this is not a bit like like dave what's dave call it what's this place? the misfits thing yeah the, uh, this is just a group of fucking misfits hey, look i love it too because when they hire you here they just tell you to be yourself and people yeah. ask me that all the time like what makes barstool different and they just literally like just come in all we want is you to be yourself that's literally it and uh that's freaking best part what's it like I've, I've i've talked to you off the air about this but sharing a favorite team with frank tank oh uh, probably the worst thing in the entire world and no disrespect to, to frank i love frank he's got a good heart but my god when it comes to sports having to share a team with him is the worst thing ever because nine times out of ten he's right like frank is always right but frank is also always negative and like shitting on the team but what, what, what so if he's negative and shitting on the team and he's always right that means my team sucks so if you share a team with frank and he's always right and he's always pissed off that's because the team sucks well I, my thing on it i guess i've got like a little bit of a poker background that's a little different but the dolphins don't suck no they suck they i mean y'all just had a lot of injuries y'all just had a lot of injuries the, at the end of the, the year dolphins last year suck every team has injuries they suck they're fucking frauds and until frank turned me Frank turned me, and I'll, I'll give him his credit. He turned me. The dumbest thing I ever said since getting hired was that I was going to make Frank a more positive Dolphins fan. He flipped it. He flipped the script on me. Now now I'm Frank Jr. Like This team has pissed me off to a place where until they start getting the job done in December and January, I don't give a fuck. Like, you have no idea how heartbreaking it is to support a team for 24 years and they don't want that's my whole life by the way and they've never won a playoff game and every time they're in position to change that narrative they shit down their fucking leg it's embarrassing i'm done with them and until they prove that they could get it done look i'll always support them i'll always root my ass off for them on sunday but i'm not buying into this september october hype anymore fuck that the season starts in december and if they can't figure it out in december and january fuck them i want to ask also because I had a very hilarious, long and winding road in college. Uh, how many schools did you go to? <laughs> I went to four schools: Florida State, FAU, UCF, and I graduated at Florida. And you're so you're, so you're Florida Gator alma yeah. mater, and you claim Florida, correct? Okay, like how, like you just every year you're like I want to go somewhere different. Like I, how how did I don't understand how how could you go to four different schools? So I went to Florida State for summer C, and I had the best time of my life. Florida State is by far the most fun college in the state of Florida. The girls are amazing. The drinking culture is unbelievable. But I knew if I stayed there, I was probably going to die. So I decided to transfer back home. So I went home to FAU, which is in Boca, which is 15 minutes from my house. And it was miserable. It was just like I was back in high school. But instead of going to high school and seeing my buddies, I'm driving 20 minutes in Boca traffic to go to FAU. And it was just terrible. There's no nightlife. There's no, there's no real scenes there. So it's just like a commuter school. No, it's a real university. But, Big, but when you grow up there, you just feel like you're going to high school. Yeah. You know, it's literally in your back. Were you there when Lane Kiffin was there? I don't remember. Okay. Maybe. Fair. Well, we're about to be joined. Uh, you're welcome to stay and hang out. But oh, uh, we're about to be joined on here on our Zoom by our good friend Jack Mack who's got to be riding super, super high. Uh, also have a food video uh, from Hogs for the Cause over the weekend that I'm going to play too because we're trying to get more of me doing stuff, funny videos on here. Uh, but Jack Mack going to join us first. He's got to be in the best mood ever. He cashes UConn, I believe, 14-1 to 1 futures ticket, and his school just won their sixth national championship in 25 years. Jack Mack, good morning. How are you? I'm good. Nothing to complain about. Um, I got in here a little early and, and I'm a little disappointed in Nikki Smokes. I mean, what, uh, Atlantic Avs not good enough for you? Atlantic Avs not good enough for you? Del Rey, like, I mean, FAU's brother, not brother, bad. Brother, Del Rey is great. Boca Raton is shit. That's fair. It's, it's My, not like Del Rey is on 
It's not like Atlantic Ave is on Boca Raton's campus. It's not on FAU's campus. That's still a 20-minute drive. No, I am. Well. Jack Mack, what you know about Del Rey, man? I, I've had my, I've had many Del Rey nights. Yeah, I've had really? nights. Okay. I've had Del Rey nights that didn't didn't end well. El Baccio. They're not supposed to end well, brother. I have nothing but respect. I love Del Rey. I love Boca. Like I like that's like top of the top. Top of the top. You ever been to Miami, Fort Lauderdale? I've never been to Fort Lauderdale. I've been to Miami though, of course. I'm gonna take you to Fort Lauderdale. There we go. Yep, Frat Lottie, we coming. Hey, buddy, you just won 13 bands. You better buy a first class flight and mine too. <laughs> and mine too. And the table at Tootsie's. I would I would have talked Jack back like, I mean, everybody loves winning championships, obviously, your favorite team, but this is the damnedest thing I've ever seen, the back to back. And not just the back to back, but like they kind of overhauled most of their roster. They won every game by double digits two years in a row. I mean, this is just sheer domination. I was at the point last night where I think UConn's playing a different sport. Yeah, no, everything about this team, the school, the fact that what they've done so many times over the past 25 years is not real. Uh, this this run is unbelievable, 140 points. Over the past two or 140-point differential. Over the past two years, they were, I think, the most impressive stat – is they they want twelve and zero against the spread in the NCAA tournament. Those are back to back six and zero. That's insane. Like that doesn't happen. Uh, obviously, because I mean, as we know, Vegas is pretty damn good at setting the the market, setting the lines, and UConn they just couldn't really price them. There's something. It's 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 the dandest thing and. I know a lot of people are going to say UConn fans are spoiled and whatnot, and that's completely fair because everything that's happened specifically over these past two years is fake. The other championships, 99 and 2004, were the, the, both those teams were really good. 2011, 2014 were not the greatest teams. They went on runs. These two teams were disgusting. Like, they weren't real college basketball teams. Um I'm, I, I don't want to say that they're the greatest team ever because it's impossible to know, but I mean, they're one of them. Like, I don't know how you can, how you could say they're not. It's Look, specifically I, this one. Yeah, I would agree with that because they always, there's a saying in sports, it's like, it's harder to defend the championship than it is to get the first one. And it's one thing, like I, I mentioned this earlier on the show, but when Florida won in 07 and 08, they had that Horford, Noah, Torian Green, Brewer, Core. they had the same team back-to-back -back years. UConn's team this year was completely different, and yet they were even more dominant, which is crazy in this transfer portal world where year to year so much changes. I, I thought this year was even more impressive than last year. Also, when you look at their road, like last year, uh, you know, they beat San Diego State in the title game. You know, I felt like maybe it was a little easier road. I mean, they beat Purdue was the other dominant one seed. And, you know, watching that game last night, even when UConn was up sick, I didn't feel like UConn was ever threatened at all. Yet, I think Purdue, even the Illinois team that they beat, even the team, you know, even what they did on Saturday against Alabama, those are good basketball teams. Last year's run, there, there, there's some things that broke their way. I don't think they were going to lose to anybody, but still, you never know. Uh, they, they got to play Arkansas in the Sweet 16 instead of Kansas. And this year, even, like, they did avoid Auburn. But then again, Auburn lost to Yale. So it's one of those things where you kind of – Hey, well, what are you supposed to say about that? But yeah, I uh, this is from Aaron Torres, who works at Fox Sports. He he tweeted this out last night. When the Florida went back to back, they returned all five starters. UConn sent three guys to two guys to the NBA. One guy that's on a G like a two way contract, Sonogo Hawkins, obviously with the Pelicans, Andre Jackson with the Bucks, and then they also lost. Uh, arguably the sixth man of the year in the country and they just replaced them with guys that are already there obviously they brought in cam spencer St uh, stefan castle and whatnot and then even the duke team that went back to back they returned four starters uconn returned i mean clinging i know how great he was but i mean he was the backup last year he played 10 minutes 15 minutes a game and uh, it's it's unbelievable i mean what dan hurley's done is it's not real it's it's fake um, the rebuilding jobs he's done 
His it's it's even what he did at Wagner was unbelievable. Uh, this the small Staten Island college, like they stunk at basketball. He came in first year and put and re, re, they went from like 340th in the country in Ken Palm to 220th, and then he goes to Rhode Island. Rhode Island hasn't been the same since he's left. No disrespect to them. Then he comes to UConn, and I mean, UConn was close to being, like, dead. Uh, I don't want to say dead, but, like, I mean, it was bad. It was really bad. The American move was really bad. They were going to be the face of a failed athletic program thanks to conference realignment. And Hurley came in here, and, I mean, what he did is unbelievable. The guys, he, and here's the thing. It's not like, oh, some recruit or no, some donor donated a hundred million dollars. They like Alex Caravan was like an 80th ranked recruit. Like Clinton was a four star. Like they got their guys and developed them. Castle was a five star, but like, you know, I'm not trying to say it's an underdog story, but this isn't a Kentucky class. You know, this is a, this was a class that was, they had to develop them. We're joined by Jack Mackle. Wake up, Mitzi, presented by Dude Whites. He's basking in the glory of what many people feel might be the uh, greatest basketball team of all time, UConn winning back-to-back -back national championships. I want to go back to what you mentioned about the situation he took over because Kevin Ollie got in a lot of trouble on the way out. I mean, they were dealing with – you mentioned the American thing, which was never a fit that, with the traveling and the realignment stuff. But then also, you know, they – like, did they, was he were they on probation at all? I mean, they, he came into like a total rebuild. Yeah, so Kevin Ollie, uh, I don't, I think they settled with them, but the how Kevin Ollie left was not good, as you can see. I mean, he's the coach of the Nets now, and a lot of UConn fans, I would say almost all of them, hope one day Kevin Ollie will, because he is really, he's not happy with UConn. He feels he was treated poorly, specifically by Jim Calhoun, and um, he he sued them for a wrongful termination, even though I mean he was. By the end of his tenure, he wasn't the best coach. But last night, Calhoun was there, and there was a great photo of Calhoun and Hurley. If they can get Ollie to one of these events, and Calhoun, Ollie, and Hurley can be together, Ollie will always be loved. I mean, he won a national championship. I know it was his first year after Calhoun. You could say it's Calhoun's roster or whatnot. He still won it. And I was probably the number one Kevin Ollie hater of all time. But – uh as I've gotten older and whatnot, like I, you just have to kind of be like, he's somebody that I really hope one day comes back to UConn because he was also a great basketball player at UConn. He, he was a part of building this entire program. This program didn't exist. It did, but they played basketball, but like they didn't exist on, on, in a real way until 1989, 1990. Uh, I mean, it's in like what they've done. Uh, you look at Kansas, you look at Duke, you look at UNC, you look at Indiana. Like these are these are schools with legacies. UConn created a it, out of nothing, out of thin air in this shitty farm town and stories. And it's no disrespect to it. It's a college town, you know? And they, they did it thanks to it. And you also have to give a lot of credit to the women's basketball program as well. Um, like I mean, they they don't they get enough flowers, but 17 national championships in 30 years or 34 is like, I mean, it's fake. It's not real. It's, it's, it's not real. I, 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 and I, it will like for me and I'm not an alum, I'm a fan, but I mean, I grew up as a Yukon Husky and whatnot. I like, I, I don't even know if you can care or ever get mad at this program again. It's like they've given us the greatest run of all time. And now it's obviously you you'll support them until the day you die. But they're like, they've, what more can you ask for that? I back to backs like fake it. And they beat every team by double digits. They, they broke Zach Eady last night. I know he scored seven 35 points, but I mean, Purdue allowed one or Purdue made one three. That was the game plan. It was Zach Eady have 50 points. We don't care. And I mean, that's how basketball works now. And we could spend all day talking about random players and whatnot that are were really big, but it's the, it's the damnedest thing. And um, 
this run was I was was unbelievable. Like if it, I was so confident in it. Obviously, I didn't hedge and whatnot. And you know, we hit that that ticket. But I mean, the memories, this team, and also winning the Big East tournament was huge. I think Hurley will prefer this championship to the last one. I mean, it's hard. Like I said, it's harder when people are gunning for you. So you mentioned you had it. At, did you have it thirteen to one? I believe. Yeah. And so when did you take it? December. January. Um, they had so in December they got blown out by Seton Hall. Then, in they they barely beat St. John's at home. They play some road games. They they don't play as well. And then Clinton comes back. They destroy Creighton. I was like, this team's like they're they're on a different level, and I how Hurley operates, uh, how he does it all, how he builds this program. I mean, I like they hit their stride last year, and I was like, they're gonna hit their stride even more this year. And the program, uh, it's, I it's obviously the Kentucky jobs are open, um, and I, he was pretty clear last night he's not gonna take it, but you know who knows. Kentucky's Kentucky. I think the biggest draw for him will always be the NBA, but I don't know if his culture would work in the NBA because he's such a hard nose. He talks so much about Stefan Castle being this five star who came in and bought in. In the NBA, like that's not really how that works, you know. Like gone are the days of Kobe, you know. Um, and maybe maybe he does fight in the NBA and. I mean, hopefully, I mean, obviously you want Hurley to stay forever, but sometimes that's not the reality. UConn will always still be UConn. They'll be at a disadvantage. They're not in the SEC. Like they don't have the money. Um, but you know, they're 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 getting to a point where it's kind of hard to ignore. Look, I don't I I don't see why as long as they have comparable money, which I'm sure when you're winning national titles, donors are firing money at it. I mean, I and it's not UConn has a pretty big fan base too up in New England. I don't know. I'd be shocked to be left. I, I'd literally be shocked. I don't see why I could have a better situation. And a big part of that is, as you mentioned, getting back to the Big East. The AAC thing was so bad with the traveling and the non-natural rivalries. But the Big East basketball thing is still super elite. And, you know, there's other, you know, I believe they won four of the last eight national championships, something like that. And, you know, they're, Marquette's really good. Creighton's really good. I mean, I know Butler's not what they used to be, but they made two national championship games. You know, it's you know Xavier's good. I, I don't know. I think that that's just a perfect situation. The Madison Square Garden Big East tournament thing is a huge deal. I, I don't know. I, look, I'm not can't speak for anyone, but I just can't see why I'd leave as long as the money is like comparable. Yeah. The only thing it could be is that he has concerns about NIL, and he gets this Godfather offer from Kentucky. And but you're you're real. My concern level is around like a 20, 25 percent. Last night after the comments, it's probably down to closer to 10. His wife I is so northeast. I don't think she wants to leave. She's been pretty clear about that. Dan Hurley, I mean, he got up there and yelled Jersey City. You yell Jersey City in in Kentucky. No one knows what that means. And that's not disrespectful to Kentucky. They just like people don't know what that is. They're so northeast. That's that's and you kind of you're right. Will give him a huge contract extension, make him one of the most high, the highest paid, one of the highest paid coaches in the country. Only thing is, it's like you know, the Connecticut taxes are still very high. You know, I and his son just graduated. It lines up, but I think his, I think his daughter. I think he has a daughter who's in, in high school still. So maybe that's keep it. That could keep them, you know, family things, family, family, t things like that can really matter for a coach, especially when you have it made, you know, it's not the difference between 1 million and 8 million. It's, you know, 9 million a year and 12 million. And there's no guarantee at Kentucky. They can run you out of town in a year. The grass isn't always greener and he's got a lifetime. I don't know. I, I just one of those situations where I, unless he just wants a new challenge, that's the only thing I can think of. Because as you said, once you get a lot of money, you have a lot of money. Like what's the difference? And, you know, he's an all time legend at UConn. I mean, I think there's no reason for him uh, not to stay in your gambling career. Jack, follow Jack Mack. 
on Twitter at Jack Mac CFB. Uh, is this your favorite? Fe- do you have any other future hits that were like this? this is one of your favorite bets you ever hit? Yeah. Uh, this is the best one. I had Celtics in 2021, like 40 to one or 50 to one. It would have been like an insane hit. And they, I really still think they should have won that series against the Warriors. Um, but this one's the best. Uh, also, it's it's kind of it's it was it, it was a huge hit, and it was your team, and uh, I, the team's really likable. You know, Cam Spencer's a, a dickhead, and you know Andrew uh, Dan Hurley's kind of a dickhead. But the team's like I, you know, the team's a fun, fun team. You know, even the guys that come off the bench, Hassan Diara, Samson Johnson, like these guys are fun. Um, the team's so likable. They really loved each other. And, you know, it's special. Like, you know, my mom watches what, like a few sporting events a year, but she watched every UConn game. You know, that's what, that's the biggest thing. Like my mom went to Yale, um, and Brooklyn college, you know, she went to nursing school at Yale. She went Brooklyn college undergrad. She has like no real connection in UConn, but she's from Connecticut or well, she's from Brooklyn, but they moved to Connecticut, you know, and she watches the men's team. She watches the women's team. There's so many stories like that. And that's why, you know, every person has a really special connection with their school. Um, and maybe due to geographically family ties, but there's a really special connection geographically with everyone from Connecticut, especially if you embrace it. Um, and you know, I remember 2004. I don't remember 1999. I was two. I remember 2004. I remember 2011. I remember 2014. This was probably the most real one. Because they, they kind of went wire to wire in a way. You know, they were close to number one earlier in the year. They had a, a few losses. Like, they lost to Kansas on the road. They lost to Creighton on the road. You, It's whatever. Then, yeah. But, like, gotcha. since... February, it's been pretty clear this is the best team in America. And that's why I never hedged. I didn't even really consider it. And even if they lost, I would have been like, hey, you know, there was a chance Purdue won last night, but I think they were just like, and I think Painter really got out coached. He really got out coached. Um, Hurley pretty much said, hey, here, you know, um, here, Zachy, score. Like last night, the worst, my worst scenario happened. Both Donovan Clinton and Samson Johnson got into foul trouble and they won by 15 points or 13, whatever it was. I mean, that's what everyone's saying. Like, oh, what if Donovan gets in foul trouble? He did. It didn't matter. Yeah. I felt like last night watching the game, uh, the, 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 like you said, they guarded Edie one on one, but the, the, what doesn't get, I guess it gets talked about a good bit. The length and athleticism of the UConn guards, like Purdue's got a bunch of guys that can hit knock down open threes when people double Edie, but those Purdue guards couldn't, couldn't shake UConn. They couldn't create any shots. They couldn't create any space. They hit one three, as you mentioned. And uh, I just thought the UConn athleticism was just really on display. Yeah. I think uh, probably, and this is, unless you're in the weeds of, college basketball or UConn, you wouldn't know this. What Hurley gets all the credit, but, you know, I mean, what Bill Murray's son, Luke Murray, and then Kamani Young, the two assistant coaches, they're like, what they've done in talent evaluation and what they've done scouting and whatnot from a a, a game-by-game basis, year in, year out, like I said earlier in this, you know, when we were talking, they didn't get all five stars. These aren't five stars. You know, they've developed guys. They 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 found athleticism in the weeds. I mean, it's not like they're this is an underdog story, but still. And and those two guys, I I, I think it's because UConn makes a huge commitment to pay their assistant coaches, which a lot of programs don't. I have no idea. None how Kamani Young and Luke Murray don't have jobs like a head coach. I have legitimately zero idea. I think they're two of the brightest young assistant coaches in college basketball. And I think anybody with 
uh, you know, any like college basketball knowledge would agree. And Dan Hurley's been saying this for a while. And as a UConn fan, yeah, fine, we'll keep them. <laughs> like, uh, and I'm sure they've been offered jobs. Maybe it's a hey, uh, I'm looking for the right opportunity. But I mean, Bill Murray's son is one of the like this is that's so crazy to say, but he's one of the best assistant coaches in the country. What? So do you have any? I, I mean, obviously you like to gamble. One thing that's fun about Jack Mac too. We got Tyler Moody here, our producer. Uh, your UFC stuff's really, really fun uh, as well. Uh, do you have any plans for this money? You're just going to keep it rolling. What, what are you going to do? Yeah. You know, I, I I'm just gonna, you know, I, and I'm pretty open about this. I take a very like strategic approach from a bankroll perspective of a, a lot, like a poker player you win. Uh, I'm not even going to take anything out. I'm just going to, put in my bankroll it's kind of just like yeah like you don't ex i didn't really expect this i thought it was a good plus ev bet and obviously it was um and it's now in the bankroll i'm not uh, and then like i'll reassess maybe at the end of the year uh i'm not gonna really uh i don't need to do anything with it um maybe i'll probably take like you know it's in an account so i'm gonna take some out and just put it into like a savings somewhere you know you know, i'm pretty big on crypto so put it in there so it's not just sitting there but you know i lo i love that it was on the DraftKings app it was before we even uh were with DraftKings. like i mean i love playing there i've always loved playing at DraftKings, and you know um it's a great place to do it and like i if that was a random team i would have hedged uh because you have to but it was UConn. Like, I would never suggest that to somebody what I did last night uh, just because, like, it was such a special case. Uh, you know, it was your team. I also said publicly I'm not going to hedge. I would feel like a fraud. Um, but no big plans. I also just – I'm not, like, a big uh, – I'm not a big traveler. I don't really, you know, I don't I don't really buy things. Uh, so – just reinvested and like, uh, you know, keep the bankroll running. You never know. I could run cold. I've run cold in the UFC over the past few weeks. So, you know, you never know. Like it, it, it can all go to shit. You know, that's why we gamble responsibly. There you go. Gamble responsibly for sure. Uh, I totally agree. Uh, I actually have a, my, my best gambling future story was with UConn two in 2014 when they won it. Uh, I found a bad, it was like January when UConn was a hundred to one at that point. Wow. Cause they won it that year as like a seven seed. If I remember. Yeah, right. no. Yep. Well, in January that year, it wasn't like I knew UConn was going to win. I didn't at all. I actually had a buddy tip me off that UConn was a hundred to one on both sites. And on the site I was betting on, they were 300 to one. And so I just literally put a hundred bucks on it because the line was wrong. Like I didn't have any clue the UConn was going to win it. And I had him 300 to one in 2014, but my dumbass did hedge a good bit in the yep. semifinals and finals. And I wish I hadn't because they won it. But still 300 to one is a lot easier to hedge than 13 or 13 to one. You know, um, uh, I haven't tweeted it out early uh, before, after the tournament, I was uh, the selection Sunday. But I tweeted, I'm not going to hedge. And it's like, I'm not hedging at all. And that was because I I was fully confident they were going to get to the final four. Like, I was like almost 100%. Yeah, it's crazy and, how dominant, dominant they were. And a lot of people are saying at the time, you can't hedge this now. And they were correct. I couldn't. But, you know, I I knew like down the line, I, I, I wouldn't want to. But 300 to one is like, I mean, that's that's a hit of a life. I've, I, I, you know, I've hit some like UFC props that are like that, but they, like no futures above... Last year, I had UConn, too, at around this price, a little bit less um, of my bankroll, though. So, But uh, last year, I think I had him like 15-1 to one or something, but not as big of a hit. Yeah, shout out to Barstool Big Cat, who had him both the last two years, too. I saw he had 10K. Uh, I believe he had 10, 10K on him this year and 5K on him last year. So uh, glad to see Stella Blue and Big Cat. I'm making a big score as well. So following you, you've really blown. I mean, your TikTok thing is epic. Uh, you know, you, you're continuing to do the short videos and investigative reporting. Uh, how, how'd you just get into that? Um, I think uh, it was kind of just a funnel from blogging. I essentially, I mean, I've been at Barcelona for, uh, for a while. I've been blogging at Barcelona since 2017. I've been on the internet since 
God knows when, you know, I've been blog, I've been doing blogs since 2010, 2009. Like, you know, I remember sending blogs to my friends in 2008, 2009 on Facebook messenger. And then, you know, I've been blogging for a while and then I kind of was like, Oh, maybe taking it like doing like video blogs essentially on funny stuff. And I worked on our social team for so long. I know what works on the internet. And then uh, it just clicked, you know, it's kind of one of those funny things in life. You never really know because, you know, I, I looking back on, it, I, I, I didn't, think it too much but you know like i was uh you know like when i started at barcelona i wasn't like this superstar or like oh this is the future or whatnot like you know like my story and i've talked about it is i got kicked off the college football show in 2019 and then like i had one of the worst bets in barcelona history uh akron minus nine you know like and then the two years after that it was kind of nothing and then it kind of just worked. Like it's one of those funny things in life. And I know you and I have talked about it and you're a very positive guy too. It's just one of those things like you stay in the arena and then boom, something works. You know, you can't even, I, I, I that's how I got started. I can't really even describe it outside of that. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. The positivity stuff. Uh, it's, I think you've got the right outlook after hitting your biggest score on your futures bet too. It's like, literally it's never as good or as bad as it seems in life. Yeah. 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 It's like, uh, you know, like, uh, I care a lot about like, uh, cause I spent a lot of time like preparing for UFC bets and whatnot. Cause I, I love the strategic aspect and, you know, I, uh, and you know, I make like a commitment to it. And then, you know, I was up earlier this year, like 14 units in the past few weeks, I think I'm down 13 units. Um, so, you know, it's like, it, it goes up, it goes down. And, but here's the thing, like there's UFC 300 this weekend and, we're not going to change how we bet. It's like a process, you know, there's a lot of ups, there's a lot of downs. And I've, I've always been that way from a, I think baseball taught it to me, even though I wasn't that good. It was just kind of like, you just keep going to the plate and then like work on your process the most. And so, yeah. And you know, you embrace the ups and downs. And I think that's something you do amazing where like, you know, obviously there's these downs, but, Nobody turns an L into a W like Mincy, you know? Um, <laughs> and I know, you know, it's not your strategy, but like, uh, there's like a lot to take from that. Like you just, when a loss happens, you kind of just go, all right. Like, for example, Caleb Williams came at me and everyone's like, oh my God. Like, and then I was like, okay, Caleb Williams owned me on the internet. How can I turn this in a way that people are like, okay, Jack, Jack Max in on the joke, like whatever. So I paint my nails. And that was that, like I made a video and that's, that's one of those things where you can kind of just be like, okay, maybe it's not a full W, but you can kind of take some, you know, you go out on your sword. Sometimes you lose in a fight, but you, you gain some respect from the fans. And that's something I've learned a lot from MMA. Like you go out on your sword, people remember you. And I'm not saying I go out on my sword when I'm on the internet, but it's always good to fight back. I totally agree. You can't take also you can't take yourself too seriously. I think exactly my, that's my other and, number one yeah. thing because I get rained on like all the time and I just like laugh at it and people are I mean people will be texting my mom, her friends saying, Am I getting fired again and all this stuff? And I'm just like, Look, I'm doing fine. I mean, I get rained on every day here. That's part of what Barstool Sports is and what makes it great. If you if you take yourself too seriously, it'll drive you crazy, as we've seen with some of our other employees. Yeah, no, I mean it's so it's a it's a it's such a weird bizarre world um and it's so fun i mean i like people will sometimes ask me it's like oh do the like you know like haters get to you or whatnot it's like uh, like people say mean things on the internet all the time it's whatever um barstool's the greatest thing outside of my family that's happened to me um and i thank god for it every day I, it's like if it's it, you know what my gratitude is like when I pray, like I, I, I thank God for what like Barstool like is given to me. And obviously like I, I earned it, but like also like, you know, there's a lot of luck that happens along the way. And, you know, it's funny. I grew up hating the Patriots and like, cause I was a Jets fan. I hated them. I grew up in Connecticut and all the Patriots fans made fun of me. And it's like, the Patriots weren't as good as they were. Who knows where I'm working right now? <laughs> like, like you have no idea. So it's life is very very funny um and 
you know, I have no idea what the next month or next chapter is going to be, but I, you know, I'm excited for it and we'll take it as it comes. It's, you know, there's a lot worse things going on out there. You know, someone's in a coal mine right now. Somebody's is, is, is doing a job they hate. I, 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 I don't even know how I did this. Like, I just got so lucky. Um, and I, sometimes people say that to me and like, I'll be like, well, I, we work really hard, but the luck factor um, is huge. And like, that's just more blessed so than luck, you know? Um, I, I do feel incredibly blessed and I'm grateful for that. The old saying, uh, it's the luck is where preparation meets opportunity. Yes, oh, exactly. I always, lo I always love that quote. And uh, I obviously am extremely lucky to work here. And then like, you know, I have, I, it's crazy. The doors bar still opens. I mean, I like this last weekend, like I just got given the penthouse at the four seasons and Nola all weekend, like stuff like that. It's just like, what is happening? Yeah, no, I mean, no, it's crazy. Like, uh, no, it's fake world. It's not real. It's like, yeah, like, I mean, um, like you do that video uh, after the yeah, Kentucky guy. Misses the Cause I'm excited for about, you know, after Ole Miss wins first SEC game and like, yeah. yeah, it's like, you know how many things had to happen for that to happen? It's like if DK Metcalf didn't do the piss, like the yeah. pissing thing. Oh, who no, that, no, I don't think if Lane did wasn't at Ole Miss, this would have worked. You know, I think that was, you know, exactly. It's like, and then also it's, it's crazy. So, and you know, we have a lot of the same friends at Barstool, you know, Brandon's been not like amazing to me. And, um, obviously we've spent a lot of time talking about college football and college football is like, I mean, without college football, I'm not here. And I know I've, I don't want to say the word evolved. I've kind of changed my content strategy a little bit, you know, um, but I, you know, thinking about Ole Miss and Mississippi state, like it's, I, the, everything from Lane Kiffin, whatnot, it's, it's, it's a, it's just funny how it works. There's something about Barstool. It's just so it's, if somebody will write a book about it one day maybe it'll be an encyclopedia but it's it's something special and it's a lot like this UConn basketball run to tie it all together it's like nothing about it makes sense I did a tweet talking about it last night like if you went to stores you'd be like like how did this happen you know no I agree like and you look like, back at the, the barstool history of championships is crazy too it's almost like if they have a barstool tie they're more likely to win. I mean, look at Mississippi State and Ole Miss in 2021 and 22 in Omaha. Both schools have never won a baseball title, and they just win them back to back. It's like obviously Dave and the Pats, but it, I don't know. It's just something about the barstool difference. It, it just, it, it's crazy. Yeah. And one last thing, and, uh, you know, uh, Syracuse fans barely exist, but, you know, like UConn's very similar to Syracuse. Syracuse, I would even say they, they had history, you know, Jim Brown went there. But you go up there, they're in the middle of nowhere. It's cold. But they're, they, they won one championship. That's what happens. You, have, you, you, you get a player and something special happens. And Carmelo Anthony, like, you can never take that away from, from, from Syracuse. Unbelievable. But UConn's done that six times. It's like it, and they've done it in 25 year span. Like, uh, it's it's you know, uh, Kentucky fans yesterday were it's were saying like, oh well, this is why Hurley wants to come to Kentucky because he's not even the biggest headline this morning. I I was I was like, that's true. Like, not that Hurley wants to go there, but that you are the biggest headline. I like I. UConn fans don't care. Like, what? <laughs> Kentucky's won one like, title. They won 2012. They've won one title since UConn's won six. Yeah. Like, and also, UConn fans, they just don't care. Like, they, they were playing in a national championship. They, like, also, they're 6-0 in national championships. Yeah, that, that, so I heard that last night, too, which is crazy. And 1-0 and against Kentucky, by the way, too, so. And also... Actually, I think that would be – I think they're 2-0 and against Kentucky in the Final Four. They're also 2-0 and against Duke in Final Fours. Um, so, well, obviously, if they've made six national well, – they they have lost in the Final Four. They lost to that Michigan State team that lost to the UNC team in 2009. 
that 2009 UNC team's one of the is up there as one of the best teams ever too with um with uh I think yeah, that was Raymond Tyler. Felton Tyler Hansbrough um, yeah and then there was that other guy uh Sean was Sean May on that to know Sean May. May yep he, he just phenomenal um that team lost to Michigan State Draymond's Michigan State and then uh but yeah it's uh it's it's surreal and um you know it's what more can you ask for uh, i'm a jets mets fan you know i'm a tottenham supporter like those teams are losers but uconn like i just got blessed to be born in the right state and my my family made was like no we're going to uconn football games on saturdays we're going to uconn basketball games during the week so i was five and like you would look up at like these players dan orlovsky you know jeff adrian Otto brown um, yeah, Kwame. I yeah, won the, won the Fiesta Bowl. And then, like you know, you look at these players, and you know, you look up to them. Like a Mecca Okafor was bigger than life to me. You know, you would it, it, AJ Price, Jerome Dyson, Stanley Robinson, R.I.P. Like these are players that are just you would go to the games and you'd be like, oh my god, these are the gods and. So that's why it's like, you know, people are like, oh, you didn't go there. It's just kind of one of those things where you're just like, well, yeah, I didn't. But like, who cares? It's one of yeah, those things. You know, you grew up within your family. Like, I, yeah, it's like if you don't, if if you didn't, if you're not from Connecticut, you don't get it. And every person from Connecticut says that. And also the fandom game. So it's like such a lame game to play. It's just like, oh, you're not as big of a fan as me. It's like, why are we doing that? No, I mean, people just want to be hate. Well, last thing before we leave and mostly sports starting in like three minutes. Uh, I see you're doing really good on the health grind. Me and you text each other a good bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how, how's that going, man? You've been looking good lately. Yeah, thanks. It's always uh, – you, you've sent me uh, texts before uh, that have always been very kind when you say, oh, looking good in this video. And I I, I always appreciate that. And obviously uh, seeing your progress and others, TJ um, at Barcelona, it's like very inspiring. So you, TJ, others – I, I regressed um, a little bit, but we're, we're, uh, you'll be fine. It's, oh, I know. I'm still in good shape working out and running. I've just been eating. I've diet stuff. has been up in there. Diet's the hardest part. It, that's what, but like, I never stopped working out. My diet was just awful. And then, uh, you know, we're working on it and I'm um, hoping to like continue to take steps forward. And, you know, we're, we're continuing down and like, we're down since last year. I mean, we're down a lot, like we're down 40 pounds or so. So, you know, and it's, it's visible and, I still got to lose more, but here's the thing. Like you, you, you should celebrate the progress along the way. And, but the diet's the hardest part, you know, and we've, we've said that before to, to each other. And especially at Barstool because in the Chicago office, I don't know how you guys do it. They, they send that food every day. Oh, like, um, yeah. At least right. in New York I... now, like we're like a, we're a, a bear land. Like they, they only send bagels once a week. Like we're like, and for me, it's like, Oh, that's good. Don't send them. <laughs> Well, Jack Mack, I want to thank you for joining us on Wake Up Mitzi, presented by the fine folks of Dude White. Just want to thank Tyler Moody, our producer as well. We're about to get out of here. Mostly sports about to start up. Uh, we kind of ran over time today, so the, the food video I've been promising is going to get pushed to tomorrow. I'm sorry, guys. Moody, thanks again as always, bud. I appreciate you. Good stuff, boys. We'll be back tomorrow. We're every week now. We're building this damn thing. Thanks to Dude Wipes. Shout out Jack Mack, Nikki Smoke, Stella Blue, Dude Wipes. Let's roll. We're going up on a Tuesday. See you guys tomorrow morning. What's up, fellas? As y'all know, it's been a hell of a messy year. And the only thing messier than my online history are my big old fat sweaty dogs. That's why this season, I only trust dude wipes to handle my Mississippi mud pies. Oh, Mincy, you're cooking now. Ooh. When you're hot, you're hot.